Lasagna planting is a slightly daft name for cramming as many bulbs as possible into your pots by planting them in layers. It's taking advantage of the fact that different bulbs have got different flowering times and they also have different planting depths. So if you get planting in the autumn time, you're going to have beautiful displays to look forward to in the spring. Most of the bulbs are really great in pots. But if you haven't got a lot of space, you might not want to put, you know, just have the tulips and that whole pot is just sat there right through from kind of October, November, waiting to bring them to flower in April, May time. So the general rule of thumb when you're planting bulbs is you plant them at twice the depth. So you're kind of pretending that there's room for another one on top. So we've got the tulips, they're a fairly big bulb and you're going to put them, that one is going to get planted that much underground. Whereas if you've got something like the crocus, that's only a diddly little thing there. So that's not going to go very far down if you're pretending there's room for just another to sit above it on the soil surface. And helpfully, on the whole, the earlier flowering bulbs are smaller ones. So that really helps with the timing. So this one, I've got my pot, anything you're using, it's a really good idea to have the drainage. So you want the whole, so the water doesn't waterlog them, it can end up rotting them. And normally, anything that we're planting up, we add the long release fertilizer to the compost. You don't need to do that with the bulb, because they are the full package. Everything you need, all the nutrients, all of the DNA and things for it to turn into a beautiful flower, it is all contained in there. So I've got this quite nice and loose. And I said, we're going in layers. You tend to go denser than you would in the ground because you want it to look really nice and spectacular. So I've got myself eight tulips there and then I'm going to sink you, down you go. That's a good thing of using the compost, it's nice and squashy. Actually, we'll go a little bit more on that. So this is a tulip called Maytime. So that's a nice easy clue. That is going to flower in Maytime. So now the month before, I'm going with some mascari. Great hyacinth. This one's called Peppermint, it's a pale blue. Very bee friendly. So we all want to help out the bees. So I'm just placing them in between. And these are going to go higher because they will just want to be that little bit of depth. A few more of them because they're a bit smaller, so it's going to go a bit denser. So I think that's nicely spaced out. Now we're going to add a bit more of our compost. And cover it up. And then we are starting off our spring. I have gone with the Pushkinia, which is ooh, running away. Russian snowdrop. Not snowdrop, much more reliable to grow as a bulb. Very pretty little plant, light blue flowers. So that should be flowering around March. So I've got March, April, May. So you don't need to worry too much about if they coordinate with each other because they're kind of tag teaming it. But you might have some crossover. So you might want to think a bit whether you do want them to go or not. Just place them in there. And I said, these are only little. They don't want to go too far down. Crocus would be another good one to have. I can just feel there is a point of something there. Last bit of compost to finish up. Give them a good water. You might want to put some bark to stop them getting weedy. And then you just need to set them aside, forget about them, and it's going to be a lovely surprise for you when you come to March time and those first flowers start to come up. <laughs>